Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's information session. My name is Natalie Cole, and I'm Bureau Chief of Library Development Services at the California State Library. I'm here today with my colleagues from Library Development Services to introduce you to the application process for the 2022-2023 LSTA Competitive Grants. We have a lot of information to share today from eligibility through to completing the application form to the grant timeline. Um, don't worry too much about taking notes because we will make the slides and recording available and you'll also find the information in the application instructions on our website. If you have questions as you as we go along, please feel free to put them in the chat or hold on to them until the end. Um, at the conclusion of the formal presentation, we'll go through the questions in the chat and then invite questions from attendees. Feel free to use the raised hand feature um, at the end of the presentation um, if you'd like to be called on. I will start now by introducing our presenters. They include Reed Strage, Assistant Bureau Chief, and Lynn Oliva, one of our two new Grants and Bureau Operations Managers. And we also have with us our team of library programs consultants who develop, consult on, and implement our statewide programs and initiatives. We have Meg DePriest, Chris Durr, Lena Pham, Jody Thomas, Bev Schwartzberg and Shana Sojoyner. And now I am going to hand over to Reed. Thank you, Natalie. The California State Library's competitive LSTA grant opportunities help libraries respond effectively to local needs and align services with community aspirations, support experimentation and research and development in California libraries, and provide training and support for grant writing and grant management for the California library community. We invite libraries to apply for funding to support local and collaborative projects that address community needs, align with community aspirations, and support equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. We are especially interested in applications from library jurisdictions that have not received LSTA funding in the past five years and for collaborative projects, applications that represent a, a variety of regions, library sizes, and populations. However, we welcome applications from all California library jurisdictions and library consortia and on any topic and serving any group. This year, libraries will, libraries will be using a new online system to complete and submit applications. Although the content of the application is very similar to previous years, the look and feel of the process will be different. Our goal is a clear and efficient workflow for applicants. This LSTA opportunity will be the first application process that we run through Zengen. So please reach out to us with any questions about your application as you move through it. The live link to Zengen will be sent out shortly after the new year. If you'd like to start preparing your application between now and then, please review the instructions on our website. I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Lynn. Thanks, Reed. All right, eligibility. In order for applicants to be eligible for LSTA funding, they must adhere to LSTA guidelines on eligibility, as well as federal restrictions on funding. More information on both of these items can be found on the California State Library's LSTA webpage, and the full links to each are being placed in the chat right now for your convenience. Applicants must also use funding according to the Uniform Administrative Requirement Cost Principles and Audit Requirements for Federal Awards and comply with the Children's Internet Protection Act, or SEPA, in order to use grant funds to purchase devices that can connect to and browse the internet. Public libraries that receive funding must also participate in the Public Library Survey each year. There are two types of competitive grant opportunities, local and collaborative. Um, local competitive grants support projects that focus on one library jurisdiction and can include projects focusing on one branch in one library jurisdiction. Collaborative competitive grants support projects that are implemented by three or more library jurisdictions. The funding period starts when the California state budget is signed, which is typically the 1st of July of each year, and ends June 30th, 2023. Projects will be selected in the spring. And awards cannot be made until federal IMLS funding levels are confirmed for 2022 to 2023, and the 2022 to 2023 California state budget has passed. I'll now hand it over to Shauna to talk a bit more about the two types of opportunities. Thank you, Lynn. 
So as Lynn mentioned, there are two grant opportunities available. The local competitive grant opportunity is open to California libraries. Libraries with up to 14 outlets may apply for one local grant. Libraries with between 15 and 30 outlets may apply for two local grants. And libraries with 31 or more outlets may apply for three local grants. Libraries applying for a local competitive grant may also apply for a collaborative competitive grant. The award amounts will range from a minimum of $10,000 to a maximum of $100,000. Applicants shall have at least one community connection in place and the community connection must be named in the application. Applicants who are requesting $75,000 or above shall have at least one project partner in place and the project partner must be named in the application. The project, par the project partner should not be a library or a library consortium. And my colleague Jody will explain the difference between a community connection and project partner in the next section. Applicants are also expected to contribute a local match to the grant funds in the form of a cash match and or in-kind contributions. Next slide. The Collaborative Competitive Grant Opportunity is open to California libraries, library consortia, and library-focused nonprofit organizations. A library, library consortium, or library-focused nonprofit may apply for and participate in up to two collaborative competitive grants. Libraries that apply for a collaborative competitive grant may also apply for a local competitive grant. Collaborative competitive grant applications must include at least three California libraries and submissions must be signed by representatives from all participating libraries. Collaborative applications may not be submitted speculatively on behalf of other agencies. Applications may be submitted by one lead agency or by multiple participating agencies, for example, three part partnering library jurisdictions. Agencies that apply separately for funds to support a joint project must connect with the state library's LSTA coordinator before submitting so that their submissions can be linked and must apply for no more than a combined total of $250,000. The awards will range from a minimum of $50,000 to a maximum of $250,000. Fund requests are expected to align with the project scope and anticipated impact. Applicants for collaborative competitive grants shall have at least one community connection in place and again, the community connection must be named in the application. Applicants requesting $75,000 or above shall have at least one project partner in place, and that project partner must be named in the application. And the project partner should not be a library or library consortium. And lastly, applicants are expected to contribute a local match to the grant funds in the form of a cash match and or in-kind contribution. Next slide. I'll now provide a general overview of the application process. The State Library encourages applicants to contact the LSTA team at lstagrants.library.ca.gov if coaching and support during the grant writing period is desired. If this assistance is needed, please do contact us before February 1st, 2022. Application forms will be reviewed by state library staff and project advisors. And advisors will not review applications for which they provided coaching and support. Not all applicants are guaranteed to receive funding. Successful applicants will be, will be assigned a grant monitor who will receive reports, provide guidance on IMLS regulations in California state library processes and monitor compliance as well as a project advisor who will provide guidance and coaching on implementing, evaluating, and reporting on the project. I'll now turn it over to my colleague, Jody. Thank you, Shauna. Now we're gonna go through the specific elements of the application. When we ask for agency information, 
What we're looking for there is how the proposed project aligns with your agency's mission, your values, strategic plan, goals, and or other activities. In other words, how does the project fit into your big picture? Project description. Please provide a description that would enable the reader to understand the proposed project if they were to read only this response and no other portion of the application. This should be a full description of the major components of your project. Discuss what you will do, how you will do it, what you aim to achieve and why and for whom. Your project description should relate to activities in the timeline and items in the budget. Then we ask for a brief abstract. Here you will provide a brief statement which answers the question, we will do what, for whom, for what expected benefit. This statement may be used for publicity purposes. When we ask for impact to date, <clears throat> This is, um, if this is an ongoing project that has been supported by LSTA funds in the past, we would like you to describe the project's results and the impacts to date. If this is a new project, then this is, there'll be nothing to add to this section except NA. Community needs, aspirations, and assets. Describe the community needs that this project is intended to meet, the community aspirations with which it is intended to align and the community assets that connect to the project. If you have done a needs assessment, a community asset scan, or any community conversation such as Harwood, this is the place to add that information. <clears throat> also briefly describe how your project will respond to your stated community needs and or aspirations. Community involvement. Here we'd like you to describe how you have involved your community and members of your targeted population in program planning, as well as how you will involve them in, in implementing the proposed project. Equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Here we are asking you to explain how the principles of equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging have guided your project planning and how they will guide its implement, implementation and evaluation. Definitions that we are working with on these concept, concepts. Equity is created through fairness and social justice and the recognition that different people's needs and circumstances may vary significantly. Social justice focuses on balancing power dynamics among different groups of people while acknowledging historical and institutional inequities. Equity means increasing diversity by improving conditions of groups that were and are disadvantaged in accessing opportunities and is about allocating resources and opportunities to reach equal outcomes. Diversity. Diversity describes both the ways that people are alike and different. Diversity can be obvious in traits such as age, gender, and other physical attributes or characteristics, but there are also less obvious diversity traits such as ability, education level, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and religion. By inclusion, we mean an environment in which all individuals feel they're welcome and treated fairly and respectfully and are valued for their distinctive skills, experiences, and perspectives. In an inclusive environment, all have equal access to resources and services and opportunities to contribute to realizing the organization's successful outcomes. And belonging is a feeling of being accepted as one's authentic self. It is one desired outcome of having created an inclusive environment. It is the feeling of being welcome and being physically and emotionally safe. Belonging equates to psychological safety. Project partners and community connections. Applicants are encouraged to establish project partners or formal partners and or community connections or informal partners. Next slide, please. A project partner is a cooperating institution designated through a formal signed agreement, typically an MOU or Memorandum of Understanding, which contributes resources, materials, funds, staff, to one or more of your project activities. Organizations or individuals who are contractors under the project are not partners 
and cannot be considered as such. What we mean by community connections are those organizations that support your project, but with whom you have no formal project agreement. Describe how each community connection will contribute to the project and help achieve the project's objectives. Typically, a community connection is an informal partner and would provide a letter of support. And then to continue the application instructions, I turn it over to my colleague, Bev. Thanks, Jody. The next section that you'll respond to is project intent, which is a series of checkboxes. You have six choices, but please choose only one. Only one will be acceptable. The six project intents are lifelong learning, which is to improve a user's knowledge or abilities beyond basic access to information and could include improving a user's formal education or their general knowledge or skills. The second choice or option is information access to improve information to act, access to information, such as discovering information resources or obtaining and using information resources. Your third option is institutional capacity, which is to add, improve, or update a library function or operation to further its effectiveness. This may include improving the library workforce, improving the library's physical or technological infrastructure, or improving library operations. Please note if you're offering programming or training to the general public, that falls under lifelong learning. If you're offering it to library staff, it probably falls under institutional capacity. The fourth option is economic, economic and employment development, improving the user's ability to apply information that furthers the status of their jobs and or businesses, such as applying or using information for employment support or for business resources. The fifth option is human services, to improve users' abilities to apply information that furthers their personal, family, or household circumstances, such as finances, personal or family health and wellness, or parenting and family skills. And the final option is civic engagement, improving users' ability to participate in their community or participate in community conversations around topics of concern. Next slide. Planning and evaluation. This section includes various subparts. The first one is anticipated project outputs. Outputs are quantifiable measures, things that you can count. These may include services or products that are gonna be created or provided. And we expect that you will count how many events or how many services or how many products. Typically, if uh, users are involved, we expect you to count how many people you anticipate will participate or benefit in this service. Next slide. The second part of planning and evaluation are evaluation plans. Evaluation plans measure outcomes instead of outputs. Outputs are things you can count, but outcomes are changes in the audience's skills, knowledge, behavior, attitudes, status, or life condition. For many of you, especially if you're doing lifelong learning, you'll be using the LSTA surveys to evaluate relevant project activities. These are formal surveys that uh, you work with your project advisor to obtain and standardized data to be collected. But you may have additional plans for evaluation, such as using local outcomes measures or um, having an evaluation report based on the work of the project. So for many projects, you'll be using the standard LSTA survey data, but you can always use other additional evaluation data. The next slide. The final part of planning and evaluation is sustainability. And here's where we wanna know is what happens after the award end date. If the project is successful, how will the work of the project be continued? If it's successful and it will be continued, please identify potential funding sources to sustain the work. Next slide. The next section is about project activities, where you'll be asked to list the activities um, or actions that will accomplish your project intent and objectives. There are four choices here, four areas where you can provide answers. And unlike the project intent, you can choose more than one. Uh, you can have only one, or you may choose more than one. The first is instruction, the second is content, the third is planning and evaluation, and the fourth is procurement. 
If you think that you have a procurement activity, you probably want to talk to state library staff or a project advisor in advance because it's relatively uncommon. Next slide. For each activity you list, you would want to describe the mode and the format. For instruction activities, and this can include things like public programs, uh, you want to choose the mode. It can be a program, a presentation or performance, consultation, drop-in or referral, or other that you define. For the format, we want to know how are you accomplishing this? Is it in-person? Is it virtual? Is it combined? Or is there some other way that you need to describe for format? Next slide. For content, the mode for content is either one of these, acquisition, creation, description, lending, preservation, or something else that you define. The format for content, we wanna know whether it's digital, physical, or combined. Next slide. For planning and evaluation, this is um, not the standard LSTA surveys that you do. You don't need to include those as a project activity. But if you are, for example, doing a major uh, evaluation or a ma developing a major plan as part of your project, this is where you would include planning and evaluation. It may be prospective, which is planning, or it may be retrospective, which is generally evaluation. The format is in-house. Is this something you're developing within your institution or third party? Did you hire a consultant or a contractor to develop the evaluation for you? And the fourth area, next slide, is procurement. You only use procurement for an institutional capacity goal. Uh, it may be something like purchasing equipment, hardware, software, supplies, uh, materials to support infrastructure, but it's rarely used. It's not, uh, it has to be the major point of that element of the project. There's no format for it. But if, for example, you are acquiring hardware or software in the goal of serving uh, an after school homework center, something like that, you wouldn't put that in procurement. You would put that within your other goal. Next slide. The final section that I'll talk about is the timeline. This will be a list of your major project activities. In the list, you'll want to use start and end dates. Typically, we use months. If the events contained within a single month, uh, say it's you know a, a festival or something like that. Um, the start and end months should be the same. So it might start December 2022 and end December 2022. But if it's an ongoing activity, make sure you indicate when you anticipate beginning that activity and when you anticipate ending the project activity. I'm now gonna turn it over to my colleague, Chris, who will talk about budget. Thank you, Beth. Uh, welcome, everyone. I am pleased that I get to speak with you about budget today. So I'm going to go over some of the key rules and definitions for filling out and completing your budget for the application. Um, when you are completing your budget, please round all figures to the nearest dollar. We would want to see something charged as $100 as, a, as opposed to $99.95. Um, each budget, budget category contains um, and requires a brief explanation of the expense. The goal of this explanation is for the state library staff to understand what you are purchasing. Um, the budget will have a place for in-kind uh, budget items there or in-kind contributions. And in-kind is defined as the value put on materials, equipment, staff time or services that are given without charge to the program or organization. Similarly, you'll be able to list any cash match your library may offer, and this refers to the applicant's estimated cash outlay, including money that may be contributed to the applicant by other public agencies and institutions, private organizations or individuals. If the applicant is, well, I'm sorry, if the applicant will be appropriating funds specifically for the project, that would be a cash match. And finally, you are asked to complete how much LSTA funds you are expecting to contribute towards any element of your project. And these are funds that specifically come from the grant for your project. Next slide, please. The budget will ask you to describe the salaries, wages, and benefits. These include all the salaries, wages, and fringe benefits paid directly to staff contributing to the project. The description of these salaries, wages, and benefits should include the position titles, but please leave off individual names the number of hours, dollars per hour, and the full-time equivalents for each position. 
Um, similarly, you'll be asked for consultant fees if you are using a consultant. Uh, consultants conduct a specific activity within the project. They, their costs can include their travel fees, their um, work fees, their accommodations, and any support services hired directly by the consultant. Um, please include the pro proposed consultant fees and the tasks they will carry out, as well as the deliverables they provide by these fees in your budget. Thank you. Uh, next up, I wanted to cover travel. Those costs can include airfare, ground, ground transportation, accommodation, meals. There are several rules for travel accommodations in the application guidelines, and all travel must adhere to these rules. Um, that also applies to all the um, budget you'll be filling out for salaries, wages, and consultants. Please refer back to the rules document uh, that was linked earlier in the chat. It's going to have a more detailed description of all of these things. Um, when you are describing the travel in your application, please include the number of travelers, who they are, the type of travel expenditures they're incurring, how and how the costs are calculated. Consultant travel um, should be included in the consultant fee section, however. Um, if you have a local travel policy, you may use that and the reimbursement rates that are contained in that local policy, um, and the policy must be attached to your application. All local policies must be reasonable as well. The budget will ask for supplies and materials. Supplies and materials are defined as project specific um, uh, materials and supplies that are integral and reasonable for your project to find success. Um, the descriptions of the project and material should include the quantities acquired and the per unit costs. Um, you will have the opportunity to buy equipment if your project demands it and it's warranted. Um, if you do look to buy equipment, which is um, items that cost over $5,000 per unit, um, you are required to seek written approval from the IMLS program officer prior to the purchase of the equipment. And when you are seeking this approval, requests um, must detail the proposed expenditure and reference the relevant LSTA five-year plan. Similarly, you can request that services are funded through your project here. Services are any cost for individuals contracted to manage and or implement the project activities. Um, LSTA funds can only be used to fund the portions of the contract of the services that fall within the grant period. They can't be used to extend beyond the grant award period. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry, we're on the right one. Uh, for services, the descriptions of them should include the types of service being provided as well as the vendor's name. Um, common services include items such as printing, subscriptions or licenses, project specific media and marketing services and similar contracts to that. Additionally, um, you are allowed to claim indirect costs on your project. Again, I highly encourage you to consult the, the formal written guidelines that we have provided you here. Um, but indirect costs incurred um, indirect costs are defined as costs that are incurred that cannot be readily isolated or identified with just one project or activity. Um, and when you are requesting indirect costs, you can put no indirect costs requested. That's very common. Um, similarly, you can use an approved indirect cost rate that you have negotiated with, uh, with a different federal agency. That's allowable. Or um, if you have no indirect cost rate uh, negotiated, you can use an indirect cost rate not to exceed 10% of the modified total direct cost if um, you're using that. And uh, the 10% indirect cost rate may only be applied to your modified total direct costs. Please see the guidelines that uh, we have provided for full information. Notably, I want to point out that the indirect can only be charged on the first $25,000 of any contract that's listed in your budget. Um, indirect costs, special rates apply to subcontracts and the portion of those costs um, that can be billed as an indirect cost. So please do review the guidelines because the details there are spelled out more completely. Um, it's recommended that you look through all the application guidelines, but really pay a lot of attention to the budget. There's lots of nuance there, and you'll want to reread your budget after you reread those rules. And I should turn it over to Megan. Thank you, Chris. Um, I apologize. I'm having a little issue with my camera communicating with my computer, so I might flash in and out, but I'm here. 
Uh, reviewers will use a rubric to score LSTA applications. The questions to be scored fall into two main categories and are weighted so that some areas comprise more of the final score than others. Reviewers will rate responses to application prompts on a four point scale, and they will be looking for clear, comprehensive and complete information in each section. The four items on this slide all help reviewers conceptualize the proposed project, providing a clear picture of it. The description of your project, the information you provide about your community needs, aspirations and assets, and your explanation about how the project incorporates and is guided by principles of equity, diversity, inclusion and belonging are all worth 15% of the final score, and how the project aligns with your organization's mission is worth 5%. The next five items here on this slide in your application all demonstrate how the project will be implemented, how you will involve the community in planning and implementation is worth 15%. Your list of project outputs, evaluation plans, and the budget are each worth 10%, and the timeline will be worth 5%. For projects previously funded by LSTA, the application must describe project results and impacts to date. If this information is missing, it can negatively affect the final score of the application. Providing a description of what the project accomplished and how it impacted participants is important, and failing to provide this information leaves reviewers with an incomplete picture of the project. As they read the applications, the reviewers will also be considering how well thought out a project is, whether or not it is feasible, if it is likely to have an impact, and for collaborative projects, does it include a variety of library sizes and communities. As you prepare your application, it will be helpful for you to answer these questions yourself about your proposed project. And now I'm gonna pass this on to Lena. Thanks, Meg. Hi, everyone. I'll be going over the general timeline for the grant opportunity. So the application window for this grant opportunity opens today on December 14th, and it will close on March 1st of 2022. And on June 8th, 2022, all applicants will be notified of selection status. Please note that this grant is for the 2022 uh, slash 2023 fiscal year. So awards cannot be made until federal IMLS funding levels are confirmed and the 2022 slash 23 California state budget has passed. The grant period will only, will be from July of 2022 to June 30th of 2023. And this is the time frame in which grantees will be conducting their grant, um, grant activities. Next please. We'd like to acknowledge that the local and collaborative competitive grants are supported in whole or in part by the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library Services and Technology Act administered in California by the state librarian. And if you receive a grant from the state library, please use a similar funding acknowledgement statement in your press releases and print and online uh, materials produced for your project. Next, please. And if you have any questions while you're preparing your application, please don't hesitate to contact us at lstagrants at library.ca.gov. Um, and next, I'll pass it on to my colleague, Chris. All right. Thank you, Lena. So that concludes. Stop recording right now for the Q&A. Yep. That's okay with you, Chris? Thanks. <laughs>